different names and titles depending on where you are. We usually simplify our lives in English by translating it into mayor, but that can cover a lot of things. And then the rest of the village council is not elected by anybody. It simply consists of the adult male leaseholders who are responsible for appointing the bridge warden, the cattle warden, the bourbon warden, the fire bucket warden, uh, all of the local officials who make the village run, the bridge warden. Uh, and it was a neat dance every year as the village council tried to get somebody to take on these sometimes onerous and unpaid jobs, and the various members of the village attempted to avoid being appointed to one of these sometimes onerous and always unpaid jobs. The fire bucket warden, of course, was to patrol the village every day, every night, and see to it that everybody had a leather bucket full of water hanging from each of the four corners of his roof, or more corners if he had an addition so that should sparks come up and set the roof on fire, there will be a conveniently filled bucket to throw on it and reduce the danger that fire will spread. The vermin warden is to report if there are moles, voles, or other things like that in the fields, in which time, case they will go out with uh, weapons of mass destruction and try to get rid of the vermin. He will also be responsible for reports of rats in the granary, mice in the bakery, or any other problems with vermin that are around. And should somebody be determined to be responsible for the appearance of the vermin, uh, the council will duly fine the responsible individual and put the money into the municipal pot. The council is also responsible for allotting the use of the village's common property. And this is where things get a little complex. <laughs> Do not think of these German fields like pictures of medieval England, you know, with long strips like this, like this. Uh, rather, in Germany, what you leased was not a strip in a field, but a share of a field. Your lease is for a 1 15th share of the large field, a 1 11th share of the west field, the right to pasture 10 cattle of uh, mature age and three young cattle in the meadowlands, a right to run X number of pigs to eat acorns in the village forest, and the right to collect a certain amount of firewood. In other words, you are essentially a shareholder in a condominium here, uh, one way or the other. And therefore, it's going to require, if all of a sudden your really zealous agricultural reformer decides to run out and change agricultural practices, talking the entire village council into trying something new. You can't have one person try something new because it's like, again, a condo board. Uh, you can't do it. It just doesn't work out that way. So they're going to have to work with land use practices like this. Now, I want you to visualize your German village. And we 
wish I had a big picture, but we poll the German village. Generally, the fried egg <coughs> design. You have the houses in some way clustered together. Now, possibly the commonest was just a cluster. However, you could also have what they called street villages, in which the houses were strung out along a road. Uh, you actually had some planned villages, in which they were nice and neat and square, with the church in the middle. Uh, those were usually relatively new founded villages founded within the past 50 years or so when square city planning and straight lines had become more or less fashionable. However your core village was put together, around it then, like a fried egg, irregular and messy, are the fields, the forests, the meadows, and the like. Mm -hmm. Quick question. If they wanted to make a change on something, did they have to have unanimous approval or just? Just majority. majority. Okay. Uh, if they tried to have unanimous, they'd have never gotten anything done. Uh, and actually, some villages actually had proportional voting in the sense that uh, the larger landholders got to vote a higher proportion than the smaller ones. Uh, because you're, you're Within a village, not all leases were created equal. Uh, you could have someone who was a full bum, a full farmer. He leased enough land that he and his family could live from his farming activities. And this would go down to a hunk bower, a half farmer. He leases enough land that he gets about half enough money from it uh, to support his family, but he's going half farmer, half power, uh, and he's going to have to work at something the other half of the year. He may make barrels, he may make barges, uh, he may double as a village blacksmith, but his, his agricultural lease isn't big enough to support him. Then you can have Pierbelbauer, a quarter farmer. Oh, this is usually the result of somebody's lease having been subdivided when grandpa died and uh, three of the different grandkids ended up with a piece of it because it hasn't expired yet on the third uh, life. Or then you could have cottagers, people who just leased a house in the village with a garden but no actual agricultural land. A cottager might and if the cottager was a widow with children, usually did, be allotted the right to keep a cow, a pig, you know, this type of thing out of on the village resources, even though technically the lease didn't provide for it, simply because the theory was that the widow did, after all, have to keep her children. And it was easier on the communal village tax rate if you let her have a cow, a pig, and a garden rather than outright subsidizing her. She could usually, with whatever she did, you know, seamstressing, laundry, whatever it was, do it. The, the village would always usually have some other common uh, Assets. It usually had a bakery oven. Unlike the classic 19th century America where the farm wife has proud of baking her own bread, this was regarded as a real time waster in the German village and there was somebody who was designated to bake enough bread in the bakery oven once a week for everybody, and they all came and bought it, the oven belonging to the village as a whole. Uh, have a question? Uh, there 
were interesting uses to which bakery ovens could be put in a moment of stress. We have numerous stories from the Thirty Years' War of the raiding foraging party from one or another army heading for a village only to be met by barrages of hot bricks sent by heavy slingshots resulting from the dismantling of the bakery oven <laughs> on the theory that uh, one could, after all, always build the oven back, but it was important to gain enough time for the women, children, and livestock <laughs> to build, uh, rather than, you know, you don't listen to talk as if foraging parties were always successful at raiding villages and stealing everything they had. There are at least as many reports in the things of actually we couldn't get anything. By the time we got there, the village was stripped as bare as a bone. Uh, and there were a bunch of guys with old muskets shooting at us from the trees. So we decided it would be more fruitful to try someplace else. Uh, the German farming communities were not docile <laughs> and easily <laughs> oppressed. It took a lot of effort to oppress them. And that there was, of course, the rebellion of 1525, the Great Rebellion. But then there were rebellions in the 1530s and the 1550s and the 1570s and the 1590s. Uh, there was never a decade so that somewhere in Germany somebody wasn't rebelling against what they perceived to be uh, somebody who was giving them grief and uh, taking away their old and traditional so basically, rights. basically, German peasants are revolting. Yes, they were oh, very, very there. Were they serfs? What do you know about serfdom? A serf was a farmer who did not have the right to leave the land he worked. He was tied to the land. This had developed back in the days of Charlemagne, really. It had started developing a good thousand years before the time period we're dealing with. And it developed in an era when, although in theory, land might make a nobleman wealthy, it was worth absolutely nothing if you didn't have somebody to stay there and farm it for you. So they tried from the, and it was a complicated period over the centuries from the late Roman period into the Merovingian and Carolingian period to ensure that the labor force could not pick up and walk if dissatisfied. This was never a fully satisfactory system <laughs> to the landholders owing to the fact that the labor force frequently took up and walked anyway. By the 1630s, west of the Elba River, basically the landlords had pretty well given